All right, so as a quick review, take your chops first law, you want to put, you know, sort of in, in uh, a complete sentence, the sum of the current entering a point is equal to the sum of the current leaving that point. That law, your chops first law, is linked to the conservation of a certain quantity. Take that quantity, that quantity is charge. Charge is conserved, so all the currents entering a point equal all the currents leaving that same point. We have this circuit here and it says the resistance of X is 15 ohms. The resistance of Y is R sub Y. The current in the battery is 2.5 amps. So that's the amps that are sort of entering into the battery over here. Calculate the thermal energy dissipated in the battery in a time of five minutes. So if we, if we consider this language here, the thermal energy dissipated in the battery, that's the heat that the battery is sort of um, generating the wasted energy, right? If it's dissipated in the battery, then that energy per charge, that voltage is not available here. So it's really asking us to calculate energy that's sort of due to this resistor, the internal resistor, all right? The way that I sort of think about calculating an energy in terms of this is that energy is equal to power times time, because power is the rate at which energy is converted from one form to another, we can think about energy as being the product of power and time. Because they give us the time like this, we should be able to think about, well, how can I calculate power to get energy? So this E here is energy, not you know, EMF. One equation for power is the current times the voltage, but then th the voltage here would have to be the loss volt. Okay, so remember the equation that the terminal PD that's the potential difference sort of available at the terminals of the battery. The positive and negative ends has a terminal PDV equal to the EMF minus the loss volt, which is equal to the current times the internal resistance, lowercase r. Okay. So the voltage here would have to actually be the loss volt. We'd have to calculate that first. Well, that's not so bad because we know that there's 2.5 amps. and the internal resistance of the battery is two ohms. And so 2.5 times two is five volts. In other words, we're losing five volts. The EMF here is eight volts. If we lose five of them, we really only have three volts available at the terminal uh, of the battery. And so the, the energy dissipated is this voltage if you're using an equation for power, um, that is this I times V. Remember the other equation for power, I squared R, and V squared over R. So all of those are equations for power, and then multiplying it by time over here, keeping in mind that five minutes, these minutes here are not the SI units, and so we want to just right away multiply that by 60 seconds per minute to get T sort of into the correct units. And so T really here, we need 300 seconds, right? Five times six, not five minutes. So it should be so that 2.5 amps I times the voltage, where because we're considering the energy dissipated in the battery, it's the five loss volts, sort of the, the volts that are lost in the battery, times the time, which is 300 seconds. Okay, then we have an amp volt, which is a, um, a, a watt, right? A watt of power. And then a watt second is a joule, because uh, a watt is a joule per second. All right, so this give us the answer. The other sort of probably simpler way to do it would be using I squared R because then we could just take the 2.5 amp, you know, squared times just plug in the value of the internal resistor, right? Because we're doing it based on the resistance of the battery times the same 300. And so it should be that this is the same as that. Calculate here somewhere. Let me check that out for a second. Okay, so 2.5 times 5 times 100, 3,750, 2.5 squared times 2 times 100, also 3,750. So, 3,750 is about 3.5 times the the energy dissipated in the battery in five minutes. So 
the terminal potential difference of the battery. So, the terminal potential difference of the battery, we happen to have already calculated, so that's when we say V equals minus IR, that's what we really need this equation. And remember we said that three volts was the answer here, and we calculated already because the eight volts minus the five volts um, that were lost. And remember the five volts we got because I 2.5 was given and the lowercase r, the internal resistance was given as two ohms. That's how we got this back. So if you solve the energy calculation by like considering the lost volts, you would have already done this calculation. You would have said, okay, well, it's just that answer right there. Three volts, that's the potential difference available at the end of the battery. The resistance um, R sub Y. So if we consider this circuit here and they ask us to calculate the resistance of this wire here, remember that wires are resistors. They just, you know, um, pieces of metal have resistance because they're a certain length, they're a certain cross-sectional area, they're made of a certain metal with certain resistance. Okay, so this is the wire that they placed in the circuit that has some value of resistance in order to determine what it is. If we consider this branch here, and we know that there's 2.5 sort of total amps um, going through the battery, there are how many amps going through this branch? So I equals V over R. And remember, there's only three volts sort of available. So you have to use the terminal PV. In other words, that's the voltage available at the terminals of the battery. We've burned up five volts of you know, energy per charge. We've lost five volts there. So three volts is what you have to use in this calculation. Now you have to use the terminal PV. And remember, we just calculated that. So like one calculation leads to the next. Three over 15, three volts over 15 ohms is the calculation for the current going through this branch, right? Because that's the 15 ohm resistor, and there's three volts sort of available at the terminal. So three divided by 15 is 0.2. 0.2 amps of current right here. If there's an ambient in this branch, it would be 0.2. How many amps must be going this way then? If Kirchhoff's first law says all the charges going into a point come out of it, if 2.5 amps are coming out and the other 0.2 are going sort of into this point, how many are here going through this wire? There's 2.3 amps. Now that we know the current here is 2.3, it's the same terminal PV, right? But the same three volts is available to this resistor and this one. The, term, the voltage is the same across parallel branches. Now we can calculate the resistance of this wire, R sub Y, as V over I, where V is three volts and I is 2.3. Three over 2.3. One point three, and again, that's calculated just R equals V over R. So you use the same terminal PV and the 2.3 amps that you calculate from Kirchhoff's first law. Once you know that there's 0.2 amps going through the, the first loop, there must be this many amps going through the bottom loop. All right, and then the last little part of this says. A new wire Z has the same length but less resistance than wire Y. Say two possible differences between wire Z and wire Y that would separately cause wire Z to have less resistance. <clears throat> and if we think about the equation, resistance equals resistivity times length over the area, right? So this is the resistivity equation. Looks like this, resistivity of a metal is equal to resistance times area divided by length. So resistance is the resistivity times the length divided by the area. It has the same length, and so this is fixed. So there's only two things we can do to change the resistance, right? We change this value, and we change this value. And you look at kind of where they're at in the equation and, and say, okay, well, we could, one, lower the resistivity. In other words, choose a metal with lower resistivity, right? Because this is sort of intrinsic to the metal. Um, 
So it could be that Y or Z is made of a metal with lower resistivity. And it could be that it has what? A bigger cross-sectional area. So greater cross-sectional area would also reduce the um, resistance, like lowering resistivity or increase in area. Greater cross-sectional area. If we replace Y or Y with that Y or Z, considering the current in the battery, state and explain the effect of changing the wires on the total power produced by the battery. There, there's always questions like this where you have to say, oh, because I've changed this, this changes, and that's going to change this you know, value in the equation. What's that sort of final effect going to be? So if it has less resistance, right? This wire has less resistance, so then there's less resistance in the circuit. So less resistance. In circuit means that we're going to draw more current from the battery. More current. Drawn from battery. And so less resistance means current goes up. And if current goes up, remember the way that we calculated the power dissipated in the battery, the total power produced by the battery, um, I times V. Okay. And so if the current goes up, if we're drawing more current from the battery, it's producing sort of more, more power. More current drawn from the battery, therefore, more power. If you um, hook up less resistance to a source of EMF, you draw more current from it, and you're generating more power. Right? You're resisting the flow of charge left. All right, so that concludes that work example.